Jay walking. Jay Swish. Hey, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Conscience, and you are listening to the Conscience Hip Hop Podcast today. We are on episode four, I believe, maybe five. You can check it out. And I've got a special guest with me today. This is a good friend of mine, practically a brother from another mother. We got Josh Miles. What's going on, man? What's good, man? Thanks for having me, bro. Dope, dope. I'm excited to have you here, man. Now, you know, I'm kind of going to center this interview around the entrepreneurial side of it, but yep. because I know you so well, I know it's going to go all over the place, and that's a good thing, man. I, I want people to know about you, the things that you're involved in, the things that you're passionate about. So without further ado, let's get straight to it. Why don't you tell the people a little bit about who you are, what you're involved in on the business side, and what um, some of your passions are. Yeah, man. So um, my name is Josh, like you said. Uh, my artist name is Jay Miles. You know, uh, Some people may know, know me by that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a husband, I'm a disciple of the Lord Jesus, I'm a dad of three, one more on the way, so got about another month left on that. Praise <laughs> God. Little man still baking in the oven, but he'll be here soon. Um, and yeah, man, um, just entrepreneurially, I am just passionate about seeing um, seeing people empowered to do business well, you know, do mm-hmm. business well. and. Uh, understand the ins and out of what that even looks like you know it's one thing to i've got a passion and i just kind of do it on the side and just kind of throw some stuff together but it's something else when you're able to put the systems in place and really have something run and function as a business uh sure. and really you know go after your dreams and do, do some different things that people are passionate about so yeah um been been in the entrepreneurial space for you know, formally probably about, you know, two to three years now. From but, a professional uh, standpoint. Yeah, from a yeah. professional standpoint. But it's been a long time coming, man. I mean I, I look back and it was I see I see some of the some seeds being planted with me, you know, running a label and sure. doing some different things, um, from a practical standpoint where it was just like all of that stuff was just preparing me for where I am today. So Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Word, man. Well, just to let people know just a little bit about how I met Josh, um, I was living in Tucson at the time. You know, my wife and I were out there uh, before we were married. She was finishing a degree. So I was out there and, uh, you know, we were plugged into a church. And that's really kind of a a time in my life where the Lord started like really tugging on my heart as far as... um, you know, I, I had known what the gospel was, but as far as the, the weight of the gospel and the attributes of God, um, I really wasn't fostered into a, a good, biblically solid church. I had good teachers of the word to me, but it just wasn't that dense. And so, um, you know, by God's grace, uh, we eventually moved uh, because of that and some other things from Tucson to Phoenix, where I met Josh's brother, Omri. Um, We met at a coffee shop. I had met him through music and he eventually, uh, you know, I was asking him, yo, you know any dope churches out here? And obviously he recommended his um, among a few others. So, you know, I eventually went to that church, uh, Grace Bible Church um, here in Chandler. And uh, the dope thing about that was uh, at the time they were doing a lot of basketball stuff after uh, Sunday afternoons. And uh, I remember I met John, you know, I met a lot of dope guys that hopefully we'll have on this podcast, but I definitely remember meeting you at one of the basketball mm-hmm. deals. We, we mm-hmm. played ball together and you you introduced yourself to me, I'm pretty sure at the time. And uh, we eventually started just chopping up. And as I was getting plugged into that church, we just kind of clicked off really quick. And uh, so it was just a blessing because that church not only had a bunch of MCs, but just a bunch of hungry cats to get the word of God out there and to be sharpened. And uh, we had a lot of people around the same age and we were very like-minded in a lot of ways so Josh and I hit it off really quick uh, so I just wanted to share a little bit of that that's how we kind of met is right when I moved back here and got plugged into a nice solid church Josh is probably one of the first dudes I met who was not only a dope dude to kick it with but was biblically solid on point had a good upbringing and a, and a genuine story to tell um, so just moving on to the questions here uh, a lot of people don't know but you're connected uh, you know, kind of with everything in some way, in, in my opinion. Um, what have your goals been as you've come aside, you, you've come alongside a lot of local entrepreneurs, artists, churches, you know, how has that looked for you and what have been some of your goals as you navigate through those? Yeah, man. Um, <clears throat> well, first and foremost, um, 
I think the Lord's given me a passion to see disciples be made, um, to see disciples be made organically and in organized ways as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I think um, just as I've navigated the local church over the past decade or so, just seeing a passion for, I mean, especially in hip hop context, it's easy for dudes to just be the young renegades. Like, yo, we, we do our music stuff in our cliques and in the circles that we run in. Sure. But to be plugged in, serving in a local church, and even having your artistry flow out of that, yeah, um, is unfortunately at times just rare. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, and so some of my goals is to one make disciples, uh, really invest my life into dudes that are coming, kind of in the in in the lane that I've already run in. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, and really you know help them ha help them to navigate that thing. Um, I, and I think part of that passion is just in some ways not having that for myself mm -hmm. uh dudes that, especially when you talk about you know dudes that um look like you uh are, have are culturally just identify with the hip-hop context and those different types of things sure. you know what i'm saying yeah. um so helping disciple those those type of dudes um like i said the last couple of years really been pressing into the entrepreneurial side of things uh my goals there are really to set myself up and my family uh just for a long-term path of being able to you know have time and financial freedom you know sure. um I, you know I've, I've been in corporate america for a while and seen how that goes uh it's great the lord's blessed me beyond what i could ever imagine yeah over the last few years but i uh, really want to be in a place where man i i can really use the skill sets that the lord's given me my gifts passions yeah um and be my own boss you know honestly um i'd love to be able to have a have a company grow to a place where now I'm able to hire people, <laughs> you know. Um, right. I dream of hiring the cat that, yo, because you you might you may have felonies or whatever it may be and can't get a job somewhere. Yeah. And guess what? I can put you on and as a part of you know not not just as an employee, but I pour my life into you and see like hopefully maybe disciple you into the faith. Um, sure. See you come to know Jesus for yourself. Sure. You know all those different things. Um, and I think that's what it looks like to really use your life as a means by which the gospel just kind of permeates everything yeah, you know? yeah um and not just you know sometimes we can compartmentalize the gospel and say well you know the christian thing i do it over here and everything else yeah i understand that i'm a christian in it but i don't really know how to bring my christianity into it practically you know sure. um so really just man what does it look like for me to own a business and say you know something how do i bring people into what I have going on and leverage those relationships because of the proximity of them. You know, um, the close yeah. proximity. If you work for me, then I see you on a regular basis. Yeah. And guess what? We leverage those to see the Lord Jesus glorified and to really see dudes come into a relationship with Jesus. So um, those are some of my goals. Like I said, I got four kids and a wife. Um, I love spending time with them. Yeah. You know, and really just freeing up, freeing up myself to, you know, be a blessing to them in the long run. Yeah. <laughs> and also... Even the even the church in the short term, you yeah. know, whether it's missionaries, local congregations, whatever it is, yeah. um, being in a place where man, like we can be a blessing to them on multiple areas because we have access to resources. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gonna kind of press you on on that, and I don't know what kind of question I'm getting at, but I'm hoping by the end of me talking, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll get around to what I'm trying to figure out here. Is, you know, I think in the African American context, mm -hmm. in the certain minority contexts uh, in the hip hop culture in general and the arts and then, you know, we're talking about the elements, whether you're a dancer, you do art, you do photography, you rap, um, you know, just various things like that, especially in the hip hop culture. Um, the idea of being a business owner is not only not really spoken about, mm -hmm. but the people we see in ownership positions mm -hmm. Um, for running business and being entrepreneurs successfully is few and far between. We mm -hmm. kind of see people that we don't identify with running the show in the higher ups and the organizations and stuff. And uh, it, it's very rare that we actually see somebody that comes from the same context as us and then does it well and then comes back and shepherds dudes uh, that have the same kind of life path into that. So I think a lot of, at least in my experience with the young cats especially, is because they've never seen something like that before. Yep. They Just even seeing somebody successful uh, that, that's familiar to them, whether it's uh, ethnically, uh, culturally, is just, just seeing that can be a shock, 
but to actually like put in the hard work and dedication to actually be educated yep. and the hard groundwork that it'll take because you don't have anybody shepherding you into that. You might not even learn about these concepts till you're 20, 30, 40 years old. How important is it for an entrepreneur um, to come from that context to then pour back into that community um, and like shape these guys towards some of the, the education and, and the gospel training and, and the, all that stuff? Yeah, I, I think it's it's of utmost importance. Um, in the local church, there's, and rightly so, an emphasis on theological shaping. Sure. Um, we, we, we help people to understand, man, what is the gospel? How should it shape you? How should it shape everything that you're involved with? How should it shape the culture? Whatever it is, right? Sure. There's a lot of theology there, and it's good. Um, recently, there's a lot of talk about how does the gospel affect social stuff? You know, yeah. with all the stuff going on in America and in the world today. Right. Like the conversation is, I think, in some good ways, and you know, even some not some good ways. But the conversation is taking a step in regards to, okay, how does all of the theology and all the nuggets of what we talk about and um, hold dear from the from the from the word, mm -hmm. right? How does that actually shape us in regards to what we're called to as we step into the world socially and yeah. deal with the issues at hand, right? Yeah. I think there's another layer of, once again, the gospel shapes all of life. Jesus owns everything. Right. And since that's the case, I think that business is not exempt from that. Sure. So what does it look like to help people learn um, the importance of, like, man, it's it's okay to start a business and do it well. Right. It's okay. And to, it's possible. It's, and it's possible. Yeah. You know, um, I think that, especially when we talk, we're going to talk about urban context. Mm -hmm. I think from the urban context, you have some of the best entrepreneurs sure. in the urban context. We know, like, I was just talking to somebody the other day. If you're talking about a drug dealer, mm -hmm. dudes know how money works. <laughs> they know how to recruit. <laughs> they know how to, like, um, they know cash flow. Sure. They know, you know, I mean, you... Yeah. These are all things Math. that, you know, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that, that's just the reality of it. That there's so much like foundational stuff that we may be dealing with bigger numbers when you talk about corporations and big businesses, but the principles never change. Right. And so what does it look like to help those guys see that, man, not only do I want to introduce you to Jesus, not only do I want to help you leverage your skill set and things that you probably are good at right uh, you know but how do i help you to do things in a way that honor the lord and do it well you know um, i tell guys all the time like man hip hoppers go start a, a business right I, if you're gonna do music start m make it a business right you know um the, i mean i just think from a financial standpoint it's good to just uh, there's a lot of tax credits yeah and things that you can get just by having a business in the right. states you know, lay up opportunities. You, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, um, you want to fund your next project? Guess what? You can, you can have a lot of tax write-offs and right. save a lot of money if you just had an LLC. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, yeah. And some real basic things. So I, I think it's of utmost importance, man, for guys to take all of what they know and pour it back into people who, guess what? I mean, at the end of the day. It's all about knowledge on some level because you can't do what you don't know. Right. You know, I can't live in light of what Jesus calls me to if I'm not even in the scriptures to know what he's calling me to. Right. I'm um, in the same way when it comes to business, entrepreneurial endeavors, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, it's important for the people who have learned those skills, learn the information to say, OK, how can I pour back into the guys that I'm connected with mm -hmm. and help bring them along in the same ways? Um, you know, it may not look the same in regards to how I got it. Right. You know, I mean, I went to college, I've taken classes, you know, all these different things. Right. For the dude that's not in the classroom, guess what? I can now leverage the resources that I've had right. and train you in some of the same things, you know? So yeah. I think it's really important. Man. That's what's up, dude. And and just to kind of stay on that business tip, um, you know, my follow-up question to that is just, there's so many ways to make a dollar online yep. today. There are so many different ways to make yep. a dollar. Um, what inspired you to give it a shot? I think seeing the opportunity. So um, a lot of the businesses that I'm involved with are online based. Um, I own an e-commerce site called Jaywalking, which is 
basically, uh, like I said, an e-commerce site for Air Jordans. Functions mm -hmm. just like eBay. It connects buyers and sellers to engage in transactions. When somebody sells a pair of shoes, because they use my platform, I get a cut, they keep the rest, and the transaction is done. It's real simple. Yeah. Um, using, there are a lot of ways to make money online. Um, the internet is the the 21st century version of the newspaper. Yeah. Um, people get information online. I don't. I actually don't know anybody that still reads a physical newspaper. <laughs> um, people get all the information from online, and so there are a lot of different ways to leverage what's already available mm -hmm. to make money. Right. You know. Um, in legal, healthy ways, um, I think that marketing <laughs> is a big thing right now. Yeah. Uh, like everybody can, everybody can come across as an expert on everything, or if they're not an expert, they can at least chime into the conversation, mm -hmm. right? Because of how the internet works. Um, I think leveraging those tools is good. I think it's um, there's a lot to learn in regards to how to do it and actually make it efficient. Yeah. You know, anybody can just dive in. I mean, there, there are free classes and tools and everything on how to do some stuff. Learning how to do it well and learning from the best is something that I'd encourage anybody. You just got to invest in you got to invest in the education piece of it, you yeah. know, uh, to learn it, learn how to do it. Um, but there's, yeah, there's just, a, it's, that's a big conversation, but there's a lot of opportunity for guys to really um, put themselves out there, start a business or whatever, it, you know, your music even, mm -hmm. to have it available and accessible for anybody who is interested in it. You know, yeah. So. Dope, man. Well, you know, I... For those of you out there who are listening to the podcast, and we do appreciate you guys all getting a part of it, because um, I mean, really, ultimately, what I'm trying to do with this podcast is put a voice to a lot of the happenings that are going on here locally, and hopefully that expands from there uh, in, in, in the business sectors, uh, in the hip hop culture, uh, in churches with the gospel. I mean, I, I'm trying to attack everything. Just what is life looking like in my local community, and how can I put that um, on a platform for the world to see and benefit from? So there's a lot to unpack here. Mm -hmm. um, and this is gonna be the unpacking podcast for everybody. We're going <laughs> to unpack a lot of stuff. I, I intentionally picked you for a lot of the questions that I'm going to be asking because I think a lot of cats have good ideas or even decent level-headedness with perspective on a lot of these issues, but because it's not thorough, not developed, or even shaped, especially with the gospel, um, they're not prepared to do a lot of things well for the long run. Hmm. They're kind of flashes in the pan culturally, hmm. especially with the gospel. Uh, there's a lot of isolation that's happening. There's a lot of divide that's happening. There's a lot of people coming together for a nice swing, you know, like a, a good run on something. Yeah. Uh, they're very opportunistic. And so I want to just unpack as many in this brief time that we have unpack not only you know you as a person but the things you're involved in and just use a lot of your wisdom uh, on some of these subjects to encourage young cats either following your footsteps or in a different path but could just greatly benefit from some of the things that you have to say so with that being said you know a lot of people I'm gonna kind of backtrack a little bit from the business and hopefully you know meet it back where we left off but a lot of people look at you I would say as like an older brother um, you know, the, the brother they never had. Um, talk to us a little bit about your testimony. Um, and in the midst of that, if you could kind of just tell us about, you know, were you always a business minded individual and what other stuff fascinated you as a kid? How, where does the gospel jump into that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll, kinda, I'll start when I went to college. Um, I just knew when I went to college, I went to Xavier University in New Orleans, Louisiana. That's where I'm from originally. Mm -hmm. Um, went on a track scholarship. And went to college knowing that I hated science, and that's I, I just I needed to get into a degree that didn't have any science classes. <laughs> looked at <laughs> looked at some curriculum, um, and I went and got a business degree. Jumped right into the business program. Um, so that's when I first got introduced to the idea of just business stuff. Mm -hmm. um, was there two years? Uh, 2005. I was starting my junior year. Uh, Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans. M my family and I, we evacuated. We went to Houston. And um, that's really when the Lord captured my heart because I was just, an, I mean, I was used to being, you know, the dude on campus, like, yo, the athlete, you know, 
get it in with a lot of people, know a lot of people, the whole nine kind of do me. You know? Yeah, man. Um, Social butterfly yeah, with sports. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, um, was in Houston, and I remember real vividly just being in a place of uh, confusion and just brokenness. Like, man, for the first time in my life, uh, nobody cares who Josh Miles is. You know, um, nobody even knows. Um, sure. And I think the Lord just brought me to the end of myself. He used, you know, the circumstance of just being in a place of like, man, not knowing, being uncertain about the future, um, not being confident in who I was necessarily anymore. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I grew up in a Christian family, you know, so yeah. I knew the gospel intellectually, but I, I don't believe that the Lord had really captured my heart at that point. Sure. And uh, it was sometime in 2005, in the fall of 2005, the Lord uh, began to fan the fame of my flesh, of my affections for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just remember reading Luke 9 and being convicted and challenged by the reality that, man, Jesus is challenging people with the with the cost of discipleship. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, man, if some, if the, if a disciple of Jesus is somebody who gives up their life for him, then that's not me. Yeah. Because yeah. I do what I want to do. Right. <laughs> um, and from there, man, I, I, I mean, the Lord clearly was changing my desires. Um, and I remember, you know, this was the fall of 2005. Um, in January of 06, I remember going back to college, just asking the Lord, like, man, give me, like, I need a new squad of cats to run with because mm-hmm. if I, like. You know, the dudes that I was with, I mean, cool dudes the whole nine, but we just, like, we used to, you know, all get it in together, right, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I was just like, man, Lord, like, for the sake of my spiritual health, I just need a new squad of cats yeah. that I can do life with that understand um, what I'm up against, you know? And the Lord was faithful to answer that. He surrounded me with some dudes um, that were passionate about him yeah. um, in a similar season of life. And, man, we hit the campus, and we were just, I mean, you know what it's like, like, you get saved and you just zealous. You yeah. know, you going after it. I mean, we were going after the campus for the Lord. I started leading a Bible study. I was involved with the impact movement um, at the time. And yeah, man, just really going after it for him. And uh, that's, that's when the Lord saved me. Um, graduated college in May 2007. Uh, moved to Phoenix, Arizona. Got a job yeah. with a big bank out here. And um, yeah, man, I've been out here ever since. You know, I've been out here ever since. And the bi- I think the business side really um, is interesting. I, when, in my first year out here, I'm in corporate America, and I felt like I didn't fit, but I didn't know what other options I had. Sure. Um, Sounds like a similar situation as just about any young man today. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. You know? um, and, but, I mean, they paid well, and I was just like, man, I'm not about to just give this up. Right. You know? Sure. So, um, I'm there sticking it out. I um, was here about a year or so and got connected with some dudes that was rapping and stuff. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I had never even rapped at the time. I had written a lot of poetry, hadn't really spit started picking up the craft and working on it a little bit and we formed the music label uh, i65 music started doing shows i mean it was kind of crazy we had no music to even put out to anybody but people had just seen us I mean, we were like hitting the block doing evangelism we cipher it up in the middle of the mall had 50 people and then we just stop and somebody start preaching christ yeah and it was crazy like in that season like for maybe a year year and a half i mean we'd literally be doing evangelism outings you know 20 deep you know we, were, we used to clown like man we trying to hit out 40 deep all saved all serious you know uh, like, we trying to get out you know um who said it wasn't the was it tadashi um man i remember who it was it was somebody from the reach camp though yeah yeah i think but, it was t dot yeah yeah maybe so um but yeah man we um you know that's that's the season we we're in man and i think when we started the label i think that was my first that was my first um i think pathway for real for real Mm-hmm. into like okay we own it and i ended up being the dude that kind of ran it from yeah. the back end yeah, you know yeah. what i'm saying um from the business side of things and it just became apparent to me and i think to everybody else that it's like man like i enjoyed it and i was good at it nobody yeah. else really wanted to mess with it because it right. was like this is cool but I, what, I, what i really want to work on is the craft work. yeah i enjoyed the business side and the artistic side um and i think from there man like that was just laying a foundation for me to really be in the space where I'm at now where I've got multiple businesses and really working them and have built out processes and systems and understand how the business world works, you know, yeah. um, and just the opportunity that is there because of that. Um, I think those are some of the things that really, uh, the, I think the label was like the, the thing that really kind of gave me that green light, like, oh man, this is something that I'm interested in. I mean, yeah. even now, man, I'm still in some ways 
still learning that everything that I've been seeing and feeling for a while now, like there's a language associated with this. Right. You know, um, like people have done this already and ha- they have a language to, yeah. you know, go with this stuff, man. So yeah, man, I, I love it. I love it. I love the thing that, that, that fires me up is the opportunity to help people develop. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm big on like, you've got to invest in yourself. Yeah. You know, so many people don't invest in themselves and wonder why they don't go far. Word. You know, um, I challenge anybody to, you've got to make the investment in yourself, whether that's financial, whether that's just time, mm-hmm. um, find the resources that's going to help you grow as an individual if you're going to really do anything well. Right. You know, um, you know if you want to, if you want to learn Greek, like invest in learning Greek, mm-hmm. you know, from somebody that, that can help train you in that, right. you know, yeah. if you want to be an entrepreneur, like, man, figure out what is it that what do entrepreneurs do? Who are the entrepreneurs that I can go follow? Where are the best tools? Ask around. Talk to people. Um, those are the types of things that I just, I, I love challenging people and helping people develop holistically. So spiritually, you know, um, as especially with just men, you know, yeah. I got a passion for young dudes that I'm like, man, when... I mean, I'm 31 now. I didn't have anybody when I was 23, 24, 25 challenging me with the opportunity, like, to be an entrepreneur. I just yeah. kind of, it kind of, you know, I kind of stumbled into it just through what I was passionate about. Yeah. But now I'm like, yo, like, there's opportunity for dudes to really go after it. So, yo, if you're going to rap, like, dope. Yeah. Like, yo, rap, kill it. There's the whole other side of it. Um, I remember watching a, a documentary with P. Diddy. And I remember him saying, like, he was rapping on stage and he looked off the stage and there was a white dude in the corner just counting cash. And he said from that point on, he was like, yo, I'm, I'm not trying to stay on the stage. I want to be that guy. Yeah. You know wow. what I'm saying? And, it was, you know, and so, I mean, of course, you know, uh, there's the there's the, the danger of loving money and all yeah. that stuff, right? So I tell people all the time, if you're going to get into business, a lot of people say, I'm just trying to get rich or I'm just trying to make a gang of money. I want to be a millionaire, blase, blase. Uh-huh. Um, the Bible's crystal clear on the love of money is the root of all evil. And so I think that you have to, like, your desire to do business has to be undergirded by a desire to serve others primarily. Sure. Yeah. You know, it can't be, oh, I, I'm in it for me. Yeah. Every, the, the focus and the, my why is always focused on me. It has to be more than just that. It has to be, man, I want to glorify the Lord Jesus. I want to help serve others. I want to be self-giving. And guess what? I I want to do business to the glory of God. So when people see the businesses or whatever it is that I'm engaged in, Jesus looks attractive. <laughs> you know, the way I do things looks attractive and want, and, and people actually want to be a part of it. Right. So, so yeah, man. Yeah, I, I think that's huge. Like Jesus Christ being the centerpiece, the, the core and the use of money isn't a fruit extension of that uh, as opposed to the other way around. That's really important. Um, I want to zero in on two questions that I want to ask you, and then we're, we're hitting around the 30 minute mark. So we're going to break this podcast up. Uh, but do you think you want to win as hard as you would have with the ministry side after you, you know, you said you hit that zealous point, you had a squad, you were in the mall, you were in the campus going yeah. hard. Do you think you would have went that hard with it had you not had a team? Not at all. Not at all. It's Why? Yeah. Um, I don't think the Bible ever gives us a context of people being successful or running the race in the long run as uh, soloists, you know, um, I think everybody, even even if you talk about an athlete, an individual athlete, Serena Williams, for instance, right? Mm-hmm. Um, she has a team of people. They may not get the notoriety, right? But there's a group of people backing her and supporting her in a myriad of ways. Sure, you know. Um, so nobody goes at it alone. I think you gotta have a squad of people, um, a support system, <laughs> yeah, of people that will believe in the vision that will champion the same things that you champion, um, that will hold you accountable, mm-hmm. you know, um, just all, all of those components are necessary for us to be um, successful. Yeah. Um, from ministry to entrepreneurship to family life, mm-hmm. whatever it is, um, it always it always takes a team. Word. That's what's up. And then, you know, another thing that I wanted to kind of zero in on because I think this is really healthy for cats to understand. I'm huge about the testimony. Mm-hmm. 
uh, it's powerful mm -hmm. and, and not just the testimony of the moment that you, that people feel God saved them and, and made them a new creation in Christ, but but more importantly, the, the, the lifelong testimony of what God has done at a certain point is still doing and will do uh, in the Christian's life uh, and, and for others around the world. So I remember you saying in your testimony that when you were in college, all of a sudden you hit this point where you started just asking these questions and being confused with these kind of long-term realities that you felt you were moving towards or having to deal with or were currently dealing with but just confused about. Um, I think that's, that's familiar to a lot of Christians, but you know, when I run into folks and I ask them about their testimony, I always see two kind of common denominators. One is, you know, uh, we had AB on for the last episode, and I remember he was saying he has specific incidences uh, in relationships, and he played sports and things like that, that kind of had defining moments that sparked him asking these lifelong questions these moments where he had voids that he had tried to fill for so long mm -hmm. and just weren't fulfilled and he felt empty and that drew him to the Lord. Um, and then other folks I've seen say, you know what, just one day, I don't remember what specifically it was, but it was a culmination of things and I just started asking these questions. For you, was there any key things going on in your life that kind of led you down a road to emptiness that caused you to be to, to, to see yourself as as being unsure uncertain of, of the future un, you know identity issues you know whatever all that stuff came with or was it literally just a snap of a, a finger kind of different outlook where you just had a new set of eyes for the first time and, and you began asking a bunch of questions and seeking the Lord yeah it, it was definitely just kind of expand on that a little bit for yeah me. it was definitely a process um, like I said 2005 I mean I'm displaced. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. all I know, all I know is New Orleans. Grew up there, lived there my whole life. Um, I'm stuck in a city I'm not familiar with. I'm stuck in the midst of people that I don't know and who don't know me. Um, both of my grandmothers passed that year. You know, I was pretty tight with them. Wow. And so there was just a series of events that I think the Lord was using to get my attention. Yeah. You know, um, that it's just like, man, my identity was so wrapped up in like who I was, yeah. you know, um, Josh, the athlete, Josh, the dude that everybody likes. Um, and it was just, it was a, definitely a series of events that the Lord used to help me see that it's like, man, like you're really not that big of a deal. <laughs> and I've still got, I still got love for you. Namely because I sent my son to die for your sins, <laughs> you know, so trust me. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, th that's really what led me to the Lord, man. Just being in that place of emptiness, being in that place of brokenness, um, seeing that Jesus was what my heart was really longing for. You know, it wasn't it wasn't the accolades. It wasn't, you know, um, I mean, I used to put a lot of pressure on myself as an athlete, you know, yeah. um, wanting to be the best. I'm super competitive, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and all those different things are what shaped me and what I found my identity in. And it wasn't until I realized that it's like, man, I can stop searching once I once I find Christ. You know, once I trust Him, um, He can. I can trust Him, find my identity there, and then everything else that I do can just be an overflow of me wanting to do it well for Him. Yeah. You know, um, and so I think that's what the Lord really used during that season of life. I mean, it was literally a season of about, probably about four or five months of my identity just being like turned upside down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and me having to rediscover like, man, what's important? Who am I? Um, in that process, like, okay, who is Jesus? You know, um, is he who I, is he really who I've said he was? Mm -hmm. Or have I just treated him as the as the side dish, you know, understanding who he was, but really not ever truly committed myself to him. So yeah. um, it was definitely a lot of that. Dang, man. Hey, we appreciate you sitting down and kicking it, um, just telling your testimony and, and even just taking a lot of time to just give people the canvas to see where you come from, where you've been to kind of move towards the direction of now talking about your entrepreneurship and stuff. Um, guys, we're going to cut this here uh, for part one. Um, make sure you check out the website, conscienceHipHop.com, so you can see part two of what Josh has to say about his business, the things that he's involved in, uh, unpacking some more concepts and current events that are going on in our time, and what the future holds for uh, Josh Miles. So stay tuned, man. Peace. <laughs>